If you think organizing two or three acts for a one-night show is tough, try coordinating 50 that are driving and flying in from all over the world. Did I mention that you'll have to pick some of them up from the airport, and some might not even speak English? No managers, no handlers, just 50 athletes coming to perform at your event, and you've got to keep them safe and show your crowd a good time. Meet Annie Tunnicliffe, producer for Defy Wrestling, one of the top regional wrestling leagues in the country. Annie and I talked about what Defy has been doing to keep their loyal fans engaged while they are unable to produce live events, and about their new deal with Pluto TV. By the way, musicians and venues, you need to hear this podcast. There's a lesson to be learned from the wrestling industry about how they operate as a community first and as a competitive sport second. Now let's meet Annie. Hey, Annie. Hey, how's it going? It's good. How are yourself? Good, good. Enjoying you... the rain here. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're in Portland, right? Yeah, yeah. So a little bit dreary this time of year, but can't complain. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah. How about you? Where are you at? I'm in Southern California. I'm in uh, Orange County. Nice. Very yeah. envious. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I won't bore you with the weather, but uh, yeah, it is nice compared to what's happening <laughs> like on the East Coast right now. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, cool. So I'm going to, I'm going to have to admit something. I don't know a lot about wrestling. Uh, so at some point in this call, you're going to have to educate me on, uh, I, I'm curious to know what are the divisions and how, you know, the sort of the, the different hierarchies in the competition and, and, you know, how someone can make a career out of it. Um, yeah. but mostly I want to talk about you. I want to talk about your position as a producer for mm -hmm. Defy Wrestling. Tell me what you do and kind of what your job is like. Yeah, so um, at Defy, we're one of the independent wrestling companies in the US. Um, we are in the Pacific Northwest. We primarily run out of Seattle um, and we're one of a few companies there, but the Pacific Northwest, similar to in music, it's kind of its own little pocket. You know, like not every tour is going to come to like the sea market that Portland is, you know, and it's very similar with wrestling and kind of all forms of entertainment. Um, but yeah, at Defy, I'm a producer, which is very similar to like a production manager in music. Um, so kind of like dotting all the I's and, you know, finishing all the T's um, on event day and kind of like pre-planning for everything before then. Um, but in wrestling, there's a lot more moving parts than in music. And there's a lot more people to manage and kind of like keep them in line, you know, for lack of a better term. Um, and there's a lot of stuff going on and no one really has like a manager at the level that we're at. So it's not like in music where you have a tour manager show up at a show and, you know, they can tell everyone like how to do everything. And like they have a working relationship. Like we kind of have like 50 ish people just show up and need direction. <laughs> so it's, you know, we have our like recurring crew who's at every single show, you know, our photographers, videographers, uh, merch people, you know, we have like caterers who come in stuff like that, who are very like fine tuned and it's kind of a well oiled machine, but then every other event we have new talent coming in, yeah. you know, and they might've never been there and they might not even be in the U S and, you know, it might be their first time in Seattle. So there's a lot of like challenges to making sure they're comfortable, you know, and making sure they know the area and what they're doing and what's allowed and what's not allowed, you know. Um, so Holy yeah, cow. Just... and that's all under you. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, we do have like a booker. His name's Matt Farmer. He's great. Um, he's known in the wrestling industry as like a historian, so he can tell you pretty much anything about wrestling. Um, from like the dawn of time until now. Um, so yeah, he's a great resource to have and he knows things that I would never even think about, you know? So yeah. he's kind of the one like corralling the talent as far as like, hey, do you like this move over here? Whereas like, I know nothing about that, you know? Um, whereas I'm like, hey, here's the bathroom. Like, here's your payout. Like, this is what we're doing for merch tonight. You know, that kind of thing. So, so yeah, it's, yeah. it's a lot, but it's so much fun. I love it. <laughs> wow. So how did you get into this business? So yeah, I kind of just fell into it, to be completely honest with you. Um, I grew up doing, you know, music industry stuff since I was like 15. Um, I used to book like DIY shows in like upstate New York, which is where I'm from. Um, and then from there, 
I, you know, moved to Portland, started working at venues here, and then Defy actually came to one of the venues I worked at and ran their first Portland show there, and that's how I met them, um, and I was in between jobs at the time, and I kind of just became a part of it, so yeah. Wow. Are you just still doing anything with music? Totally, yeah. I mean, right now is kind of a standstill. Um, I mainly work as like a merchandise person. So I just sell merch for a bunch of different touring acts when they don't have someone to do it. Um, or at like a local venue here called Edgefield. It's like a 5,000 cap. Um, and it's a McMinimins venue, which like in the Pacific Northwest is like kind of like a chain of venues, I would say. They have a bunch of like bars and restaurants and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, and then otherwise I work for a company called Take Warning and I'm their head of production. And we do shows in like Portland, Seattle and uh, Bellingham, Washington. Right, okay, so I need to ask it in the right way. <laughs> You're good. Okay, so I don't really wanna draw shade on the music industry, but I'm sure you know, you know, it, it, has, its, it has its rough and tumble, right? Uh, totally. Tell me, what do you think the wrestling industry is like in comparison? Honestly, um, I w I'll be completely frank. I was pretty jaded, like, on the music industry and kind of over it um, right before I met the folks at Defy. Um, you know, because of things like that, um, mm -hmm. I would work shows and I would be, like, shoulder checked by someone until, like, they figured out I was the one writing the check, you know, or they were, mm -hmm. like, totally condescending and... You know, it, it does get like very taxing and it's hard to move up in a lot of places. Um, and sometimes even when you're exactly where you think you should be, it doesn't feel like you're doing the right thing, you know? Um, and of course, yeah, there's like different personalities of music that are sometimes very hard to jive with. Um, yeah. So with wrestling, um, one thing that I like really drew me into the industry is I was at the first like Defy show that I worked and I was just selling merch, you know, and every person who came into the venue shook my hand, mm. which was completely shocking to me you know like I'm not used to I don't know if it's because I'm like a younger female too but I'm not used to that in music you know sure. like usually people don't even say hi you know that kind of thing um but in wrestling like a big part of their culture is that you shake everyone's hand in the room because they're there for a good reason you know like if someone's in the room they're important and you should respect them like no matter what so yeah even like you know if someone showed up with their wife like they're getting their hand shook too you know so that was one thing about wrestling that I was like wow this seems a little bit more like wholesome if you will than you know like the music industry that I'm used to um well, yeah I, I mean <laughs> I've kind of noticed that it's kind of like a community I, I feel that totally yeah definitely yeah and the fans are very 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 dedicated especially at defy um we call them like the defiance and there's right. like a facebook group and we do a bunch of like uh charity work with them and they all support it like a hundred percent and yeah they're very committed they come to every show like they talk to everyone they're very polite and respectful you know they buy like every piece of merch we put out and yeah it was very almost like a culture shock to me, like when I started working in wrestling, but a good one. Yeah, yeah. So do you feel that there's a lot of competitiveness amongst the amongst the wrestlers? Um, it's actually, I don't think so. I no. mean, it, they like, they call it in wrestling, like putting each other over, which is like, you know, when you, like if I gave you a good referral, like that's what they call oh, it. Okay. Um, so yeah, like if I was like, oh yeah, I just had an interview with him, he's great. You know, they call that like putting someone over. Um, wrestling has its own language too which is very interesting yeah. um but yeah so they all kind of like lift each other up and they don't really see it as a competition at least the people that I work with um you know like and even on the top level like if you see like an independent wrestler going to like WWE or AEW like the two competing head companies people like even on the other side are happy for those people you know even if they're working for another company because they know how hard they've worked you know and yeah physically too you know it's like if your friend's band signed to a label that you're not on like you're still excited for them because they got signed you know right. so yeah it's and they all work together like pretty closely you know and they're trusting each other like way more than I could ever imagine you know like you're trusting someone with your safety to like catch you and you know make sure you don't get severely injured and I think Think there's definitely like a sense of camaraderie with that you know wow 
Yeah. Well, that's cool. That's great yeah. to hear. Um, so, okay, now maybe you can tell me a little bit about how the how the different divisions work, and you know, someone that is wrestling in your division, what what are they hoping for? What's kind of the next class, and 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 uh, and also, how does that help your company if somebody succeeds? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, so. I'm also very new to wrestling, so I'm sorry if anyone's listening to this and it doesn't agree, feel free to reach out and educate me because I'm new to this business as well. Um, but as far as I know, um, wrestling historically has been regional, you know, and it's been very hard for people to break out of that region, like especially before the internet came about so you know like in Canada there were certain areas where people would become like the star of that area and then they would try to tour similar to like a band would to get that exposure um and it's kind of the same way these days for like local wrestlers you know so like think of like a local band level of a talent um so those people let's say like I'm a local wrestler in Portland like I would hit you know like Seattle like Bellingham maybe Vancouver BC like if I'm lucky and you kind of do that like 500 am I saying that right yeah like the radius that they say to do in music like your local region is like 100 miles within where you are so it's very similar to that um but a little bit wider of a net because you know not everyone's a wrestling fan whereas you can probably bet most people enjoy music to some extent um so yeah like a lot of people just do like the regions that they're in and they start out doing it the same way a band would you know like they have a full-time job or they go to school or what have you and then they do shows on weekends you know and they'll do like oh maybe I'll do like two nights in Seattle or I'll go to Salem and do like two nights there type of thing um a lot of people also try to go to California you know for obvious reasons um because they can hit more markets there um and yeah a lot of like portland and seattle wrestlers definitely do that um another thing though in wrestling that's very common and it was very shocking to me is um the promoters actually pay to fly talent in and out of Mm -hmm. their city so that's something that to me coming from music where promoters are usually trying to you know screw you over like no right. disrespect i work for many promoters um you know yeah whereas like in wrestling they're like flying you in putting you in a hotel you know and you don't see that in music until you've made it you know sure. so so for me that was really shocking um but you know if you're getting noticed a lot of people will fly you in you know and they want you to be on their card um right. like their show but yeah um And then Defy, like we get to profit off of people like going on because we've had a lot of people and we put out, you know, like pretty high level content. Um, And then we've had like one of our wrestlers, Cody Chun, was on AEW, which is on TNT, you know, Mm -hmm. so that's really cool. Like that's if you have cable, you know, you can watch it. You can watch on the app on YouTube, that kind of thing. Um, So people are really excited because there's this local kid. I mean, he's like 22, 23 years old, you know, and uh, he's on national television you know and yeah. he's cambodian so a lot of people in cambodia were seeing him making tiktoks of him like super excited about it you know so that leads people back to defy because he's done a ton of matches with us you know so for us it's beneficial because we have people who love wrestling who want to see more of like him and then they end up like you know down the rabbit hole of youtube and they find us you know right right so yeah definitely beneficial um and yeah, yeah, hopefully that answered your question. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Okay, cool. <laughs> so how does, um, how does an organization like Defy make most of its revenue? If, if I can ask that without you giving away, you know, any trade secrets. Yeah, totally. I mean, uh, with us, you know, with Defy, everyone's different. I'm sure like different companies, you know, have their kind of like bag that they go for. With us, it's definitely our live events. Um, we put out like a pretty good product and we get a very good draw um, and we run the same venue. So Defy typically, you know, pre-pandemic and post-pandemic, hopefully, um, we'll be running like a monthly show in Seattle at the same historic venue. Um, And usually like we on a great night have about 700 people coming in. So you can imagine like that plus merchandise sales plus, you know, beverage sales, food sales is the main source of our revenue. Um, And then 
before all of that, like the other things, you know, we would have trickle in, we had like a defy on demand page where people could, you know, come and pay to watch previous matches. Um, we had merchandise sales online, like that sort of thing, but definitely the bread and butter is the live events. Okay, cool. So yeah, now I see where you're saying there are similarities to the music industry. I, I, I totally get yeah. that. So yeah. yeah, now let's get to kind of the ugly <laughs> truth of 2020. What, uh, tell me what's happened. How are you guys surviving? Yeah, I mean, um, luckily, like our overhead cost is relatively low. Um, some wrestling companies have like a school, you know, that they pay for and we aren't in that boat, like luckily, and I feel so bad for the people who are. Um, we would rent the venue on like a, you know, nightly basis. It's not like we own a venue. So our main, you know, things that we have to pay for are like our, you know, keep our website up, um, you know, things of that nature and our storage unit where we keep our ring. Um, so luckily, like we've been able to kind of skirt by. Um, but yeah, we've we've tried to get creative with like how to bring in money. Um, the main thing we've been doing is like different merch drops. Um, so, you know, we put out like two different face masks, you know, because who isn't um, mm -hmm. different like pins and T-shirts and stuff like that. Um, we just launched a brand new merch site, you know, that has a lot more like print on demand type of stuff that has never been available. Um, so people are into that and kind of bringing up like old show posters and doing stuff like that. Um, yeah, we did like a live merch sale where we had our ring announcer and one of the, the wrestlers like pull up stuff and be like, hey, we have this shirt for $20. You can buy it right here in very like QVC style. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we've, we've tried to like be creative with stuff like that. Um, we launched a Patreon and we do some like exclusive stuff like this, honestly, you know, like through Patreon with the wrestlers and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, just kind of like trying to keep our head above water and be positive that this year we'll be able to run shows again. And get, yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if what's happening in the music industry is is any indication, I'm starting to see that shows that were rescheduled from last year and pushed back and pushed back. Now I'm starting to see um, all the dates starting to solidify. I'm starting to see mm -hmm. these bands uh, that I follow. I, I start to see more dates being added um, to their their own tour schedule. And it seems like April, May is is about the time that is there. Everyone's projecting at yeah. least at least the mid size venues. I won't say the arenas, but certainly the mid size venues. Mm -hmm. So do you, do you see a similar trend going on? Do you do you or a similar timeline? Yeah, I mean, hopefully. Um we're kind of at you know the will of washington state there's honestly there's some wrestling companies that are running shows right now um but we just kind of are in a different bubble you know like being in seattle and we want to be as safe as humanly possible so we don't want to put anyone at risk um we also don't want to you know half-ass it if you will because you know we want to put out that quality of product that we've always put out and we don't want to kind of cut any corners on making that happen um i, I hear you yeah. so yeah yeah Did you guys I'm explore hoping. oh yeah it'll happen it will happen yeah. um so have you guys looked into live streaming yeah definitely um we do want to you know abide by the regulations and the rules within seattle city limits as well as washington um so we've kind of treaded lightly with that but um once it's safe to do so, like I'm sure we will look into doing something like that with our local talent. Um, one thing is a lot of Defy shows, we fly in talent and I think that would be a problem now, you know, definitely a big hurdle to jump. Yeah, and costly because uh, it's, it's not like, you know, a band could just get together in their rehearsal space and do a live stream and, you know, it doesn't cost them anything hardly, right? It's, yeah. it's, it's not the same as, yeah. I know, I totally get it. Okay, interesting. So tell me about this new deal with Pluto TV. Yeah, um, so I don't know too many of the finer details of it, um, but we are on Pluto TV, I believe it's channel 732, um, and yeah, it launched two days ago, we were on at like 10 a.m., so it was really cool, it was kind of like, you know, just watching like morning wrestling um, before I went to work, so it was really yeah. fun, um, yeah, they started launching a boxing channel, and then they also launched a wrestling 
channel. So 24 hours, they'll have um, stuff with independent wrestling TV, um, including us. We call it like Defy Now. Um, and we've been putting up some of the matches from like uh, July of 2019. And I'm sure we'll put up other ones. So it's really cool to like, you know, see it from the camera's angle instead of you know like running around like peeking through the curtain and watching little yeah. bits here and there and yeah it's definitely you know like a nostalgic emotional thing kind of like seeing the room full of people and everyone being so happy um so yeah I think it came out at a good time and a lot of people needed to kind of reminisce on that and then we have new fans seeing you know what defy is all about so it's definitely been cool Right. Good. So you're reaching new markets. That's fantastic. You're you're mm -hmm. keeping your fans satisfied or at least uh, sated for for the time being. Is this all free content or do you have to pay a subscription? Yeah, um, Pluto TV in general is completely free. So if you had like a Roku or an Amazon Fire Stick or, you know, Xbox, PlayStation, what have you. Um, yeah, you can just like download the Pluto TV. It's an app. And it's very cool because you can kind of like flip through the channel guide, you know, like you would on television. Um, so it's got that little like nostalgic feel and kind of like fills that pocket. I feel like for millennials who don't pay for a subscription to right. television. Um, but yeah, they have a bunch of cool stuff. They have like a 24 hour channel where you can watch American Ninja Warrior. <laughs> so they've got lots of cool stuff on there, but yeah, we're just one of the channels um, in there. You know, we, Sorry, we're not one of the channels, but we are on one of the channels on um, their app. So it's really cool to be a part of that. Right, right. Yeah, yeah exciting. So let me ask you kind of the million dollar question. What was the biggest lesson that you learned in 2020? Ooh, um, don't take anything for granted, wow. I guess, is the, the biggest one. I would say I learned a lot of lessons, but... Yeah, I mean, and me and any of my friends who run shows are now like, we'll never complain about it again, you know, like I'll do an 8 a.m. load in with a smile on my face, you know, as long as I can do this again. Um, so yeah, I guess that is the biggest thing I took out of this is not to take anything that I do for granted because I will miss it when I can't do it. Of course, yeah. of course. Well, it sounds like an exciting career. I, ne I had never thought about how similar it is to the music industry. I learned a lot. I appreciate your time. I'm glad to see that you guys are still thriving and you found a new market and a new way of, of reaching out to your audience. Is there anything else you want to plug before we go? Yeah, I would just say check us out on Pluto TV. And um, we have a new merch site, which is right on um, defywrestling.com. And you can follow us anywhere on social media at defynw. Okay, awesome. Well, thanks again, Annie. It was a pleasure talking with you. Yeah, thank Good you. Good luck. So much Stay for out of the me. rain. Yeah, you thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, take care. Thanks. We all know that Adam Spencer will need to fight to survive after you. You know, let me do that. Let me I'm getting paid tonight. Let me earn my paycheck. Let me let me do the interview. This is a grueling match. What what does it feel like to be the winner of a match like this? <laughs>
my God, I miss independent wrestling. We so happen to be executives for like this major wrestling company now. But, but, but you know what? You know what? Deep down, Nick and I will always be indie wrestlers. Instead of being at home and working in the office like we probably should be, well, we've had like three weeks off and I told Nick, man, I already miss it. Let's get on the road again. <laughs> for, for a long time, I haven't really been able, and my brother, we haven't been able to go on the road and, and go to buildings like this to see fans like you. And God, I miss it so much, honestly. the Young Bucks brand, what it is today. We couldn't have done it without each and every one of you. I really mean that. For a long time though, I would ask my friends, I would ask my buddies, what are some of the hot independent wrestling companies that are going on right now? And, and a lot of people told me, Young Bucks, Young Bucks, I swear to God, if you get a chance, They're having the best shows. They're actually putting independent wrestling on the map in Seattle. So I told Nick, I said, let's fly ourselves first class, which we did this morning. Let's get on an airplane. Let's go do an appearance for free, which we did. and going places and you're not going to see a lot of them and it seems really grim, right? Yeah. You know what? I call it BS. I just saw 25 of the most talented wrestlers in the back. You're going to be just fine. Yeah. It's because of places like this that independent wrestling will live on for a very long time. Seattle! This might be the first time I've been here. Is that true? It, you know what? It's not going to be our last. We will be And I never knew how 
uh, I never knew uh, how it, ah, shit, I fucked that up. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll just leave that in. I don't know.